so the piece is called Ocean of Tears. It's a piece I started thinking about maybe six or seven years ago. It's been rolling around now. It's a sound poem about grief, and it's based on my own experience, having just passed through a fairly traumatic period in my life. Um, a number of things happen at the same time with family and my living situation to kind of throw me into a vortex of sadness and grief. You know, essentially, I lost my father, sister, and brother very close together from cancer. And uh, in fact, my, f my sister and father passed within six months of each other. And I also went through a very traumatic, very long, drawn out divorce all at the same time. And essentially, my entire life flipped upside down. And you know, it's, it's something that we all experience but what I found, and I'm sure many other people have had this experience, was that our culture, our society, does not allow space for grief, you know? I remember, it was a short time, maybe about a year after everyone had passed, I was still going through some other things. I was trying to get my bearings. And just being met by impatience from people around me, why, am, why was I not through it, as though there was a timeline attached to it? And the more we don't allow space for it, the harder it is and how it affects so much, so much of our lives. And the other thing I was trying to kind of meditate on a little bit was both the concept of it feeling in the moment. It can feel as a very solitary experience where you just feel completely and utterly alone as so no one can understand what you're going through. Um, and yet it's something we all experience. And then also expanding upon that to a larger notion of our collective grief. I think our world right now is very difficult. And there are a lot of horrendous things going on that I think affect each one of us in different ways. And I think a lot of people are experiencing a lot of anxiety and distress right now. And that has to do with grief. I mean, we're losing the world we know. It's changing into some place we don't know, and in, and in a lot of ways, it's becoming very scary. And so I wanted to start to think about that and to start a discussion and a safe place about talking and sharing our experiences about it. So that's sort of where this idea came from, and starting from a very simple idea of a single tear that never stops, and there's so many of them, and that can turn into this Thing that we use when many of us, I think many people when they describe their experience of grief, talk about feeling like they're drowning and the waves of grief, feeling like you can't keep your head above water. You know, it's, it seems to be a very watery metaphor that we gravitate towards, but it also very much feels that way. I mean, grief can, you can be perfectly fine and then suddenly something will trigger you and you get completely pulled down into your own pain. And so I'm trying to, having kind of passed through the worst parts, coming sort of out the other side of that, trying to start to explore that. And it's funny, I didn't realize how, even though I feel very much stronger now, having done a lot of work on myself and worked through stuff, I'm still struggling a little, because I have to go back through and remember what that feels like and try to find a way of constructing in a way that experience and I mean while it's a melancholic kind of thing to somehow come out and resolve it into something a little bit more positive or hopeful at the end. The first thing I started with was just kind of a waterscape of sorts with using just water droplets, kind of creating a little bit of a rainstorm, and then starting to kind of find the structure of this feeling of being overwhelmed, of being pulled under, of feeling like you're drowning, of feeling, you know, being, being pulled to the depths of your own being, this, the darkness of it, the scariness of it, and then how it, it can sort of mellow. You can kind of get in a melancholy that can be very mellow and it can also be very almost uh, monotonous sometimes you know it, it lulls you in a weird way until your anxiety perhaps dissipates and you kind of come back up for air and then it can happen again 
And while it is a personal experience, I also wanted to open it up and acknowledge that you know, we have a collective grief, but also that we all, as part of the human experience, experience loss and experience grief, and to open that up more. So what I've done is, over the last little while, been collecting people simply saying, my tears, while considering their own loss. And then I'm in the process right now of going through and taking the voice samples, cleaning them, shaping them a little. Because part of the tears part, my tears, felt like the shape, the sonic shape of a water droplet, where the T would be where it hits and it kind of splatters. In, in my mind, that's kind of the shape that it sounds like to me. But I also have asked for as many different voices and languages as I can get as well, so that I can point to the fact that A, we're not alone, and B, we're all experiencing certain parts of uh, collective grief together, even though, again, it feels like we're very much alone. So that's where I'm going with it. It's um, more difficult emotionally than I thought it would be. But I'm trying to take pressure off myself, knowing that this is the beginning of something. It's the beginning of my attempt to dialogue about it and start a conversation and allowing myself gently to find my way, trying to lift as much pressure as I can because I'm still kind of re-experiencing it right now and for the first time. And also, <laughs> the other part that's difficult for me with this is that A, I've not made my own work in a very long time, and B, uh, I have never made a uh, solely sound piece before. Um, when I was making art, you know, my background is in art, when I started making art, I worked uh, with film and video and video installation, where sound was always had a very prominent role. But even at that time, I had no idea I was heading into the sound world. This is before I kind of started to kind of catch the bug and then moved on into the uh, commercial film world. Uh, I didn't realize the journey that I was on. I did remember feeling frustrated about not being able to feel immersive in it. And, and part of this is about feeling immersed in this experience. And so the fact that we now today have these technologies that are now you know, still very infantile, but starting to come into their own, starting to allow for a platform to explore that where you really can feel like you're in a sonic space. And it's, I, I find it to be a very exciting time to be working in audio for that reason. Well, I think sound is a unique medium anyway because it's so different from all other mediums. The elements that are most interesting to me about sound are the viscerality, the primality, and uh, the emotionality. You know, the emotional charge that sounds can carry is quite extraordinary. I'm not ex excluding the possibility of doing something with a visual element, but right now I feel like it's a good place to start because it allows the people who are experiencing the piece to really find a place to insert their, themselves in a gentle way without visual stimulation. So, and, and what people tend to do when they're listening is close their eyes. It becomes very, very internal. Because we can do it together. We can listen together. But we, it, it also is a very, I, I, I've noticed when I've been at groups where we are listening to pieces that everyone closes their eyes. And so there's sort of a, a communal thing going on and a very individualistic thing going on. And I don't know, as, as a place to begin to talk about something so deeply personal to each and every one of us and so unique, so it depends on your experiences, what has triggered the grief, what your loss is. Because it can be a person, can be a, you know, a beloved uh, beast in your household. It can be um, it can be opportunity. It can be a life that you wanted, um, or a life that you had. So there's many kind of forms of loss, and I don't want to restrict it at this point in trying to find a place to talk about it. And then with the immersive formats, to be able to be fully surrounded by it. I mean, we have binaural. You can do headphones, but I also love the concept of a group of people collected 
sharing the listening experience and then being able to have a conversation after. So I think from that point of view, sound and the immersive sound formats that we're starting to explore are really kind of powerful for that.